Hello everyone, welcome to Apex Hours. So these sessions are mules out for Salesforce developers. I am Sravan Lingam. I will be here after taking these sessions for Salesforce developers to learn MuleSoft. So getting started, uh, just a little bit about myself. I am Sravan Lingam. I am a MuleSoft ambassador and a MuleSoft meetup leader. And I have overall eight plus years of experience in integration domain and overall like close to 7.5 years on MuleSoft. So I started with Mule 3.5 version and now I am working on Mule 4.4 version. And I am all certified MuleSoft developer and architect and owner of MuleSoft Tech Zone YouTube channel. I worked at various locations like India, Poland, Canada and US and um, my passion is about all about teaching, painting, vlogging and there are many more. So without wasting time, let's see what is the agenda for today. So I will be discussing about the prerequisites and common FAQs before getting started with MuleSoft which many of the beginners has. So these sessions are exclusively for you know uh, who are new to MuleSoft who want to learn about MuleSoft. Then before getting started with MuleSoft we have to understand the concepts of web services and what are APIs and web services versus APIs and then we will end with um, what is MuleSoft for this particular session. Please note that whatever I am explaining in general terms that is for your understanding but when you are trying to articulate or if you want to put it in a technical terms you should always use the technical terms but I will be using some general example so that it will be easy for you to understand. So getting started so these are the common questions and uh, you know that i face from uh, uh, people who wanted to learn mulesoft or who are new to mulesoft the very first question is like what is mulesoft for salesforce developers again these particular sessions are not generally only for salesforce developers uh, we will be concentrating more on salesforce integrations that's the reason we have titled it with like mulesoft for salesforce developers however these sessions are also useful for those who are not in part not part of salesforce development or architecture so everyone can start you know going through these sessions and i will be discussing about other integrations basic integrations like uh, integrating with database or you know uh, uh, or any other like aws something like that so but we are concentrating more on salesforce integration because this is more specifically for salesforce developers and um, many of them keep on asking me this question like do we need to know any coding languages like java python dotnet absolutely no i keep hearing here and there like in some social media platforms that you have to know uh, the knowledge of java and all no absolutely no mulesoft is a no code and low code platform and you don't have to know java or python or dotnet but however knowing java gives you an added advantage you will get you know because its backend is like a java enterprise bus so um, knowing java is always an added advantage but to start learning mulesoft or to work on mulesoft it is not mandatory so please don't worry about coding languages um, mulesoft is very easy to learn and um, another uh, question is like oh, people come to me asking like i am from testing background or i am from linux background i am non it background can i learn mulesoft absolutely yes so i started this beginners course like two and a half years ago and i saw many of the uh, beginners or your know, developers who are from different backgrounds have uh, are now successfully you know mulesoft developers and even i i saw recruiters or hrs who came into mulesoft domain and they are like successful in this domain so don't worry about from which background you are coming it's all about like how much effort you keep in learning MuleSoft and what should we learn before getting started with MuleSoft yes knowing about web services and APIs is always good to know um, so I will be explaining few terms like web services APIs in general way um, you can actually you know have a read on what are web services and APIs and official training details uh, so now we have like training.mulesoft.com where you can have official course uh, any point platform fundamentals also you will be having courses in trailhead so you can join trailblazer community and you can start your courses there so and uh, last but not least i would uh, i would like to say that you know practice practice and practice there are no shortcuts all right so uh, please put your efforts in learning i will try to make uh, things easier for you to understand and um, yep let's get started 
So as I said before knowing what is MuleSoft, it's important to know what a web service is. So a web service is a kind of communication between two machines with each other over a network. I'm using this term called network. Network is nothing but internet. Okay. So when two machines like two machines can be two computers, two servers, we got, we, we used too many technical terms, but they are all one and the same. We use client and server client is nothing but the consumer. We can use multiple terms, right? So two machines communicating with each other over network is called web service and the web server running on the computer. For example, it listens to the request from another computer and when a request from another computer is received over a network, when I say over a network, over internet, the web service returns the requested resources. So what is happening? One computer or one machine is requesting something and the other computer is responding something over the internet. And uh, over when I say over the internet, it has some standard protocols. That is what we call as HTTP or HTTPS. So any software or any application that uses standardized web protocols like HTTP or HTTPS to connect between two machines or to interoperate or to exchange the data from two machines over the internet is considered as web service. So in short, web services like two machines communicating over internet through HTTP or HTTPS protocols. And there are two different types of web services, RESTful service and SOAP service. SOAP services are the legacy web services, but still there are um, some clients or organizations who are still using SOAP services. And RESTful services are, you know, uh, where uh, any kind of data is accepted, whereas SOAP services, they accept only XML data. So. Shall we see a demo quickly, like what web service look like? So when I talk about uh, request and response, let's go to some website like bbc.com, right? You can say, again, this is something which I'm explaining in general, like an example, but don't take it as an exact example. So here you can see like there is a web page or web service. I can say this is web service because it is running on a HTTPS protocol. In that way, we can know that this is a web service, but I really don't know back end it is whether it is a SOAP service or a RESTful service, okay? Because this is UI, right? So when you click on home, you can observe that there is something being populated over on the screen. When I click on sport, there is something else that is being displayed, like, you know, sports content is being displayed. But whenever I am clicking, for example, real, right, whenever I am clicking on each of these functionalities, you can see there is something that is changing on the URL. So we call this part as URL, https colon www.bbc.com slash real. So we call this as a URL. So in the URL, we have like DNS, domain name services, with port internally it has a port and then whatever starts after dot com or dot in right after dns these are called resources resources is like we we write internally some code we, we call them we will see more what are resources but uh, we write something in the back end like when you are hitting sport please show the sports content and when you are clicking on work life you can see automatically the resource name is changed okay and you are getting details like work life and again, if you go to sport and if you click on football, you can see that they are using like the, these are like URI params. Okay. So football. And if you want to click on tables, you can see that is like the, you can, you should always from here after when you are started, when you are learning MuleSoft, you should always watch the URLs. Okay. And um, yeah, and if you try to use some other name, if I try to change, alter the name of this, it will say not found. That means there is no resource that has been coded in the back end to show the content with this name tables. Okay. So 404 is not found. So whenever you say like not found, that means that resource is not found. Okay. When I just type cricket and enter, yes, it is not found because it is like you are already using football here. And you, when I just remove the football here and use cricket, you can see the cricket news. So you the main thing I wanted to let you know is whenever you are clicking something you are receiving something either it is a success response like cricket page or if you are passing wrong name you are getting 404 not found this is also a response irrespective of success or 
failure response whenever someone is requesting something you are get receiving some response and this is over internet because www means internet and this is https protocol and that is why it is called as web service so hope you understand so just play around like when you click news you can just, uh, you know you can observe the url and how it is working and uh, try to change things and observe how it gives the response forget about the success or failure it should give some response at least because it is a web service now coming back to our slides what is an api then so whenever uh, so we have like API stands for application programming interface and APIs allows or to communicate or exchange data between two systems example here there is a client and there is a server okay clients always sends the request to server server process the request and server sends the response to client so who is sending the request from client to server and who is sending the response from server to client that is what api is doing so api acts as like a you know a broker between a client and server which will take the request and response so aps does that work and for example take a restaurant example this is a very famous example that we have so assume that a waiter is going to a table from the customer or client you can use any word and uh, he takes the request from client then this particular whatever order that client plays there will be he will go to the kitchen and asks you know the server to process the request here in this case like he is processing their her order right and uh, once the order is processed he will go and s uh, serve it to the consumer right so here the waiter acts as an api okay he is the one who is taking the request to the, from client client here is the customer and sending to server server is the, is like you know the chef and then once it is processed from chef that means the server uh, the waiter again takes the uh, processed request and sends over to server so api acts that way okay so let's take a small example again on uh, apis like let's go to make my trip.com most of you might know make my trip it is one of the uh, india's largest booking platform and um, just for example take like i want to book a flight between new york to delhi okay and some departure date and all when i click here you can see there are many things that are happening in the url okay so as i said before make my trip.com is a dns and we have like resource called flight and search okay we are searching something okay that is how it is coded there is a question mark over here so usually the request is sent in many forms okay that we will discuss more in the coming sessions so request can be sent as a part of query parameters uri parameters body or headers so there are four different types of uh, ways to send uh, you know your request so here for example this particular website or you know the developers uh designed an api so that they can pass the details in the as a part of query parameters so whatever is there after question mark they are called query parameters so you can see itinerary is like nyc to delhi and there is a date here trip type and everything here and you are getting some response about the flights what if i want to change the nyc so here you can see new york just observe i am not changing anything over here i am just typing sfo because i know i am a developer i know that you know some codes that will be used if i click enter you can see automatically san francisco is populated over here or for example hyderabad from india hyd and if i enter you can see hyderabad to new delhi i am not changing anything over here but i know that when i look at my url i know that the request is passed through you know uh, query parameters and that's how i have altered these values and i have seen the results and for example again like uh, this is 16th of august let me put like 23rd of august you can see automatically the values changes so this is one of the api so what make my trip is doing internally it is taking the request from client which is me and connecting to multiple systems so it is connecting to indigo airlines air asia airlines all or for that matters it connects to all different airlines that has 
flights that is going from Delhi, Hyderabad to Delhi. Okay, and it and it is returning the results like it is combining the results and giving the response here. So this is what an API does. Okay, so we are integrating, you know, we are integrating with different systems to get some response. All right. So coming back to our slide. Before going to web services versus APIs, I wanted to show you one video. Uh, what is API? If you Google on YouTube, you will get from MuleSoft. This is the restaurant example that I have been showing you. Connectivity is an amazing thing. By now, we're all used to the instant connectivity that puts the world at our fingertips. From desktops or devices, we can purchase, post, pin, and pick anything, anywhere. We are connected to the world and each other like never before. But how does it happen? How does data get from here to there? How do different devices and applications connect with each other to allow us to place an order, make a reservation, or book a flight with just a few taps or clicks? The unsung hero of our connected world is the Application Programming Interface, or API. It's the engine under the hood and is behind the scenes that we take for granted, but it's what makes possible all the interactivity we've come to expect and rely upon. But exactly what is an API? It's a question everyone asks. Okay, not really. An okay, to speak plainly, an API is the messenger that takes requests and tells a system what you want to do and then returns the response back to you. To give you a familiar example, think of an API as a waiter in a restaurant. Imagine you're sitting at the table with a menu of choices to order from and the kitchen is the part of the system which will prepare your order. What's missing is the critical link to communicate your order to the kitchen and deliver your food back to your table. That's where the waiter, or API, comes in. Ahem. The waiter is the messenger that takes your request or order and tells the system, in this case, the kitchen, what to do, and then delivers the response back to you, in this case, food. Now that we've whetted your appetite, let's apply this to a real API example. You are probably familiar with the process of searching for airline flights online. Just like at a restaurant, you have a menu of options to choose from. A drop-down menu in this case. We have seen this example just a while ago. Turn city and date, cabin class, and other variables. In order to book your flight, you interact with the airline's website to access the airline's database to see if any seats are available on those dates and what the cost might be based on certain variables. But what if you're not using the airline's website, which has direct access to the information? What if you are using an online travel service that aggregates information from many different airlines? The travel service interacts with the airline's API. The API is the interface that, like your helpful waiter, can be asked by that online travel service to get information from the airline system over the internet to book seats, choose meal preferences, or baggage options. It also then takes the airline's response to your request and delivers it right back to the online travel service, which then shows it to you. So now you can see that it's APIs that make it possible for us all to use travel sites. The same goes for all interactions between applications, data, and devices. They all have APIs that allow computers to operate them, and that's what ultimately creates connectivity. So whenever you think of an API, just think of it as your waiter running back and forth between applications, databases, and devices to deliver data and create the connectivity that puts the world at our fingertips. And whenever you think of creating an API, think MuleSoft. So this is about uh, what is an API in simpler terms. So just imagine as a waiter, like who takes the request and serves the response. And you have seen the best example that I have already shown, like a, a booking flight portal. And let's see about web services versus APIs. What are web services and what are APIs? So APIs and web services are not mutually exclusive. They are not two different, entirely different things. Okay. Every web service is an API, but not every API is a web service. That means uh, APIs are kind of evolution of web service as both pur purpose is like the same. It's like information transfer. So don't break your heads to know more about like what are web services or what are APIs. Very simple. APIs are a kind of evolution from web services and both purpose of the purpose of web services and APIs is information transfer. That is the main purpose, right? What is there like if you keep your information with you, there is always a way we need to transfer data or information from one person to another person or one system to other system. So that's where these APIs help you. 
and um, as i said earlier we have like uh, two different types of web services or apis you can say you can say soap apis rest apis so these are the basic basic differences between soap and rest apis so soap apis it's based upon http and it's all about xml your input will be in the form of xml your output will be in the form of xml however rest apis use multiple standards like http json url xml so you don't have to worry about when it comes to the type of input or type of output you can accept input as json send the response as xml you can accept xml and send json your wish restful accepts all kind of metadata but whereas soap it accepts only xml as i said in the second point request and responses are in xml and restful services can have any format usually soap services user uses visual web service description language whereas you restful services uses raml swagger there are many types but in mule soft we are going to learn in these sessions about raml raml stands for restful api modeling language i will show you what raml is in the coming sessions but this is the main difference that you have and soap services are always complex to understand because it is having xml format and restful services are user friendly okay these are the basic difference between soap and restful services so now here comes our picture what is mulesoft so mulesoft it is a salesforce company it was acqu acquired by salesforce and it is an integration platform so you have to understand this term integration integration the name the word itself says like you are integrating something when integration happens that means it is always between two or more systems right you cannot integrate with yourself right so two or more systems it can be like a between a database and salesforce it can be between netsuite and jira so any two systems we, if you need to integrate then you have to use mulesoft that's where it, come, it comes into picture and that's why we are calling it as integration platform and i am also calling this as api management platform okay it's not about developing apis isn't it you have more something more right it's not about only development that comes into picture when it comes to integration i'll show you why i am calling api management platform in the coming slides so basically this mule the runtime engine of any point platform it is based on a lightweight java based enterprise service bus and the integration platform that allows developer to connect applications together when i say applications again it can be a database it can be aws it can be salesforce okay it helps us to connect very quickly very easily and enabling them to exchange data why i'm saying quickly and easily you will get to know once you start your hands on okay uh, and as i said like people always have this perception that you need to know java no this particular mulesoft is a lightweight java based enterprise service bus but you don't have to really know java good to know of course and as i said it enables easy integration of sus existing systems regardless of different technologies you know the application uses example like jms web services or jdbc or http or any more it will easily enable you to integrate what is easy again when you put your hands on you will get to know about that and what does api management platform means this is very important so with mulesoft you can design your apis you can develop your apis you can deploy your apis you can manage secure reuse your apis all this can be done using anypoint.mulesoft.com which we commonly call as anypoint platform mulesoft itself is a whole package for apis if you go to other technologies other there are many other technologies in integration platform right but mulesoft is one of those platforms which can provide you everything usually if you are going with other platforms in those platforms can help you to develop apis or only manage apis or only like you know design apis but mulesoft is helping you to put all it's like a one stop place i use this term one stop place for designing developing deploying managing secure or reuse you don't have to buy any other license to perform any other actions so this is where you can like any point platform we call it anypoint.mulesoft.com where it does everything for you 
okay and uh, this is a little introduction about our first session that is mules out for salesforce developers you can always follow us on salesforce apex hours a uh, youtube channel and linkedin channel also this is mules of tech zone which is my youtube channel and you can always reach out to me on these social media platforms <laughs> so uh, i think this is a good start we will see more sessions more interesting sessions in the coming sessions and uh, looking forward to see you in the next session until then see you bye